I just put the ECU in that I got back from RS Enthalpy. I've tightened the 10 mil bolt down for it. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Tyler is putting the battery in. Um, this isn't the regular Miata battery. Uh, I actually just have it laying around, so it should be more than enough to power everything in the Miata anyway. But I am going to get a new battery. It seems that possibly we have the wrong terminals on the starter, so we're going to check that. Um, when Tyler plugged in, well, tried to plug in the battery, the negative terminal was arcing like crazy and it started burning the, um, well, the terminal off. Did you put that on the right now? What was that? Hold on. Something just turned. Yeah. Do you have those on the right connections? Yeah, positive. Yeah. I think we already have an issue with the starter. Keep it there? Yeah. When the negative cable made contact with the terminal, you could hear the starter making a noise. Um, so obviously there's something wrong, so we're gonna jack the car up, take the passenger side wheel off, because it's really the only way to access it and check it out, make sure nothing's hitting other metals or maybe we have everything on the wrong terminal. So first problem, let's take care of it. Okay, so what we ended up doing is, I know it's like you can't see anything anyway, but the starter down here, um, we think that one of the wires was touching a piece of metal that it shouldn't be touching and that's why it was arcing the battery. Uh, what we did is we took everything back off and hooked it back up, all three wires, uh, and made sure it wasn't touching anything this time and seems to be fine right now. It didn't arc. The battery is in place at the moment. Tyler fixed the headlights because um, we didn't have the arm in the correct place, but that's an easier fix. Um, Probably going to be the easiest. <laughs> so we got those done and fixed. The starter issue at the moment is fixed. Um, whether it will start or not is another story. But at least the battery can be on. Um, so at this point I don't know if the fuel pump is working because I cannot hear it. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure about that, um, I guess we'll just have to try and turn the key and see if the regulator pushes fr pressure and if we're getting oil to the turbo and stuff. I don't know if I do or not. I got like a faint hint of it. Hint of what? Like is it... I guess it's just like new electric maybe? I don't know. What do you smell? I don't think it's anything bad. That's getting hot. Literally melting the plastic. I smelled something burning, and for some odd reason, it was the O2 sensor. Do those get hot? Not that I know of. I got the key. I do have the oil line off as well, but I want to make sure that it is going to kick out something. Well, hopefully oil. That would be ideal, to come out of the oil line. Can we just give it like a slight crank? What's that for? That's the cam angle sensor, so it shouldn't be, it shouldn't turn over with that unplugged. Like it can't start? Yes. Car? Are you ready? Me neither. Let's do it. Ready? Yep. My heart's pounded. Oh, hold on. Here we go. You're good. Keep going. Keep going. Like, stay on it for a little bit. Do you have pressure in the bag? Ready? No. Oh my 
god, my heart is pounding. My heart is pounding so hard right now. This engine hasn't been started in over what? A year and a half? It's over. I did wiring okay. <laughs> so far. For never doing wiring, yeah, that's pretty amazing. All it's right. turning over. Try and start it real quick. It's easier said than Do it again. Yeah, it's not getting any fuel. Still no oil. Here, try it again. Fans kick on. Fan? Yeah. That and your turbo spin, so that's always nice. <laughs> Yeah, still nothing coming out for oil. So as you saw, it cranks over, um, but we def that was weird. We're definitely not getting any fuel. Um, there's no oil coming out of the turbo line yet, uh, which is worrisome, but I don't know how much pressure needs to build up for it to come out. So, um, so I don't think the fuel pump is hooked up properly or well or not working um it could just have a dead fuel pump yeah i mean it could be a bad fuel pump i guess like i said i can't hear anything and i feel like usually with aftermarket fuel pumps it's usually they're usually louder um but there's no pressure or anything um so yep gotta fix that so we don't see that any oil is going to the head itself. Um, so I'm thinking we might have a pickup problem in the sump. So I'm um, going to look. Well, obviously we can't look at that, but I'm going to look and see possibly what could be the issue. Here's to hoping we don't have to pull the engine again. Figured out one of the fuel issues. We had the hoses to the regulator so messed up so basically this is your inlet to from the fuel pump here on the right side of the miata and that's going to feed your injectors which goes here um and then the one that comes out of your injectors here i ran down through the manifold comes out here and then goes to the inlet of the fuel pressure regulator. And then you run the one down under it to the return line. Now before we had it all mix matched and I think that's why we were leaking so much fuel. So we got that fixed. The only problem is, is this piece uh, is leaking here because it's just an O-ring on the outside. So I'm gonna get a new one of those. This is just the previous owner's probably like eBay junk. So. We'll fix that. We still don't have any oil circulating, so we're currently trying to figure that out. We did find out that one of the big issues was we didn't have the injector fuse. Yeah, and a reason why the Here, fuel this, wasn't this getting... This first. It doesn't, really. It does. reason why the fuel wasn't getting to the injectors themselves was because we didn't have the relay. The, well, the fuse, the 30 amp fuse. The thing that I'm reading online that a lot of people are saying is packing the or filling up the oil filter with oil and trying to put it onto it and spin it on because because we had all the oil out of it it could be dry with where it is right now we don't have the ability future us buy a freaking oil relocation kit because it's gonna save us in the long run um, you mean past us no, future us. And past. And yeah, why the f didn't you do that? Why didn't we do that? <laughs> because we were broke at that time. We still are. Um, the other thing I was seeing, someone was saying that if you took off this line here and put oil into it and help feed oil down, but at the same time looking at it, it would be the same as just pouring oil in. I am probably wrong in that. 
The thing that we are worried the most about is the oil pump being just completely shot. But or the sump. Or the sump. I mean, fingers crossed it's not the sump because that was the most expensive part. <laughs> but right now, I'm just hoping that it's air bubbles in the oil pump itself, which is why it's not able to actually get the vacuum on it and start circulating the oil. So we're gonna tr either, we're gonna try and do a couple things and try and get everything else sorted out. So from what I've been seeing, uh, a lot of people online are saying the best way to try and prime oil in this is to actually take out the spark plugs because it'll help turn over the engine quicker and also disconnect the injectors and the cam angle sensor and hopefully we can start getting some oil out of here. Also, they were saying that with, at least in our application, the oil filter is completely dry. So they're also saying if you can get a funnel and just try and put oil through that side, that'll help force oil through and help prime it. So we're gonna try and do kind of a combination of both of those and hopefully we can start to get oil primed and running through the system. Ready? Yep. It's worth every ounce of blood I've put in this fucking car. Look at that! It looks like I peed. Oh yeah! Woo woo! <laughs> so, what well, we ended up, well you explain it. Okay. We did a mixture of both. So, I took off the old, well actually, here I'll, I'll just show you, it'll be easier that way. This is the stock oil filter that was on there. This thing was bone dry when we started this. Now, after putting oil into it, cranking it over a couple times, we pulled it off and on the inside, there was absolutely no oil. So, what we did, pulled that off, cranked it again, make sure oil was coming out. It was coming out to the outer side. Eh, I got stuff on me. So what we did is we used our oil pump, same one that we used for the diff fluid, we cleaned it out, and I shoved it into the hole that normally the oil goes back into. While Chelsea cranked it, I tried to pump oil into it to get, I guess to help get it moving or whatnot. And we also took out the spark plugs. Taking out the spark plugs, it's less compression. So the engine's able to turn over faster. So with that, we got oil. Well, you missed a step. Oh. We filled the soap oh. and then. And then, uh, after that, like we still weren't seeing oil actually up at the top. So we had an extra filter because we were planning on changing it anyways. Let it sit just by itself for probably like five to 10 minutes full of oil, just resting or marinating, whatever. Uh, threw it back onto it and then, what was it? It was probably only like 10 seconds. It was seconds. like about 10 to 12 seconds. I so, was cranking it. So if you're not seeing oil in your SR, do that. That is going to be a, like it's kind of a pain in the ass for us but if you have the ability to try it it's it'll give you <laughs> i'm so relieved right now i don't even know <laughs> i know i'm just, yeah we still have an issue with fuel it's going crazy leaking all over the place so we still have to figure that out but the oil is like Whew, it's a load off the shoulders let me tell you oh look at that so tyler tightened this down now that everything that we saw oil getting out to go to the turbo gonna go ahead and throw the spark plugs back in and then figure some stuff out from there just to show you how much oil we went through <laughs> oh, trying yeah. to make sure we get that thing we have a nice puddle of oil welcome to lake michigan in florida here we go Okay, so it is working then. We're gonna try and start it. Wish us luck. We still have a little bit of a fuel issue we're still dealing with, like leaking wise out of the regulator. Um, 
hopefully it doesn't leak out of here again. Hold on. Make sure you put your fuse back in. Um, and we'll also see if the battery decides to work. Alright, you ready? I guess try it. Alright, here we go. <laughs> she starts. Oh, it starts. So, this is what I'm talking about. We still have a fuel leak. Like, two of them on this regulator. Like, I don't understand. This isn't leaking anymore. It's leaking from the end. And, yeah. I don't get it. So this is, like, really our major issue right here, right now, is the fuel leak. Well, I see a problem. What? We have a leaky leak. Right there. Where's it coming from? Mm -hmm. Stripping down the rack. So from what we can tell that oil leak, I can't get my camera down here, but the oil line with the banjo bolt, there's like a um, fitting that the banjo bolt goes into for the AN line. And it looks like that is loose, and that's where it's dripping from. Start number two. Oh shit, no. It's leaking fuel again. Oil line's good. It's the fitting. It is a fitting, isn't it? Yep. So there you guys have it. It actually started. Everything seems to be just fine. We tightened up the oil line. And unfortunately, we still have the fuel leak. So we're going to look into figuring that one out. It should just be that fitting that's going into the fuel pressure regulator on the return. It's the, well, it's the top one. But we're going to try and get that sorted out. That's going to be all for tonight. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.